احمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقولوا راعنا وقولوا انظرنا واسمعوا وللكافرين عذاب اليم ما يود الذين كفروا من اهل الكتاب ولا المشركين ان ينزل عليكم من خير من ربكم والله يختص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب العالمين يا ايها الذين امنوا this is for the first time in surah al baqarah that we are having these words of ya ayyuhal ladina amanu and please note that the whole of the makki quran doesn't contain this expression of address to the muslims in none of the makki surahs this is actually a typical term used to address the muslim ummah and the muslim ummah actually was formed at madina in makki surahs ya ibadi alladhina amanu ya ibadi alladhina asrafu but not ya ayyuhal alladhina amanu the only exception is surah al hajj and about that i have told you that there is a difference of opinion whether that surah hajj is makki or madani this is for the first time and this is to address the muslim ummah as a whole including the mu'minin the muslims and even the munafiqeen they are also included in the muslim ummah legally ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la taqulu ra'ina o you who profess to believe this is how i prefer to translate it o you who believe i think the better expression would be o you who profess to believe to claim to believe la taqulu ra'ina don't say don't utter the word ra'ina this was a social expression among the arabs when you were you were sitting together and somebody was speaking and maybe that someone has not heard what he said he used to say that as if you used to say today excuse me please give me some concession ra'ina so they used to word, use this word ra'ina but the jews you know change this word to raina and raina means oh our herdsman so to insult to inflict an insult to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they change the pronunciation of this word just as they change ata'na to afaina and there was very close resemblance we have just read in the previous session sami'na wa afaina instead of ata'na in the same way instead of raina they used to say raina so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the muslims not to use this word at all and instead use the other word unzurna just wait for me just look towards me wasmau and you listen with the full attention so that you don't have to use this word walil kafirin azabun alim or for those disbelievers who are using these words instead of the real word for them is a very painful torment very painful chastisement ma yawaddul ladina kafaru min ahli alkitab wal mushrikeen none from those who have taken to kufr and disbelief whether they are from the people of the book min ahli alkitab wal mushrikeen or they are from the idol worshippers the mushriks the pagan arabs none of them wants or wishes or likes an yunazzal alaykum min khairin min rabbikum that some good thing should be sent down to you o muslims from your lord this wahi is coming to you this quran is being communicated to you this is the biggest blessing of allah subhanahu wa taala neither the people of the book like it nor these pagan arabs like it why you have been blessed with such great a benevolence of allah subhanahu wa taala wallahu yaqtassu bi rahmatihi man yasha and it is for allah to decide whom he reserves for his mercy and blessing whom he chooses for his mercy and blessing 
Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. And Allah is the owner of great bounty. Ma nansakh min ayatin aw nunsiha naate bi khairim min haa wa misliha. We do not abrogate any verse, any ayah, or make it, cause it to be forgotten. Naate bi khairim min haa, except that we bring a better ayah in that place. Now this is a very important issue. Because although the deen of Allah has been the same throughout, the basic teachings of the deen of Allah are the same. From Adam till Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The deen has been one. But the sharias, the laws, the rites and rituals, the customs, they have been different. There was different form of salah in the Jewish sharia. There's a different form of salah with us. There were different rules for psalm, for fasting, for the people of Moses, alayhi salatu was salam. There are, there are differences in the rules about psalm in the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now this changing of sharia means something from the former law has been changed. And something has been abrogated. And instead something else, something new has been given. Now the Jews took it, make, made it an issue of objecting on the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you say that Moses was a prophet of Allah, if you say Torah was the book of Allah, how come? How do you change these things then? Why then change in the Sharia? Why this change in these, the detailed laws of Sharia? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had all the knowledge from the very beginning, why didn't he send the total and the final sharia from the very beginning? Now this is the answer to this. Because you know, the human kind was undergoing a process of mental, intellectual and social evolution. That process was going on. Hence there was a need of a different, of an of a, of evolution in the sharia also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been changing the rules from time to time. And this is called nasr, abrogation. And this nasr is present in Quran also. In the beginning some commandment was given. There was a commandment keep standing throughout the night. At least one third of it. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qumil layla illa qalila nisfahu wa bin qusminhu qalila awzir alayhi wa ratilil qurana tartila Keep standing for the half or two third or at least one third of the night. Then it was abrogated. You can't continue with it. It's beyond your power. So actually there are changes during the Sharia of Muhammad, the, the evolution of the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu That is why I said that the blueprint of the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then gradually developed into the final form and that we shall find in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Ma'alam min ayatin we don't abrogate any ayah of ours or cause it to be forgotten. We bring a better one or similar to it. Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful? He has the authority to do whatever he likes. Don't you know? That all the kingdom and sovereignty of the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ And you don't have, and you will, you will not find, besides Allah, any of your wali. What is, who is wali? Protector or guardian. Nor you will find any helper. No wali except Allah. No guardian except Allah. No protector except Allah. No helper except Allah. Am turidun an tasalu rasulakum kama soila Musa bin Qabl? Do you, O Muslims, want to ask your Rasul? Just as was asked from Moses, alayhi salatu was salam, before this. وَمَنْ يَتَبَدَّلِ الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدَّلَّ سَوَى السَّبِيلِ Whosoever exchanges kufr in place of iman, so he has gone astray from the right path. This ayah can be addressed to the Muslims as well as the Jews. Because the Jews demanded from Moses alayhi salatu was salam as we read yesterday. Lan no mena laka hatta dara Allah jahratan. 
we are not going to believe in you unless you show us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we see him with our eyes plainly. So they were making such demands from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. So are you repeating the same? Is history repeating itself? Do you want to demand from Muhammad also the same thing as you demanded from Moses alayhi salatu wa salam? Secondly, this ayah can be related to the Muslims also because it is not liked that you go into very f finer details of these laws asking question if this happens what will I do if this thing happens what shall I do so asking these questions was forbidden because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he has given some commands and he wants to limit that law to tho those details the rest you know he has left to you but if you go on asking and asking and asking so your freedom will become smaller and smaller and smaller and you will have more and more and more of burden on you of sharia so this is something which a man you know he as if he is adding to his burdens when he is asking questions unnecessarily there is an example that when you know this this was declared that every muslim who can afford it is a farz it is his duty to perform hajj now somebody stood up and asked, Sir, is it imperative and first to do the Hajj every year? The Prophet just kept quiet. He turned his face, didn't give any reply. He again came to that side. Ya Rasulullah, I asked the question, is performing Hajj necessary first every year? Again the Prophet, you know, kept quiet. For the third time he again asked. Then the Prophet was angry. He angrily replied, if I say yes, it will become imperative for all times to come for every Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to put burden on you. And you want to add to your burdens. So that can also be in the background of this ayah. <laughs> Many among the people of the book, that is the Christians and the Jews, they very much like and desire that they take you back from Iman and make you kafir again, make you disbelievers again. Hasadam min in the Anfusim. Out of jealousy only. They know that you are now in a better position. You are in a better place. You are in Iman. But out of jealousy. They don't want to accept Iman themselves, but they want that you should also be deprived of this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasana min in the end for saying, Mim baadi ma tabayyana lahum al haq. After that, the haq, the truth, has been made clear to them. And they clearly recognize the truth. Fafu was fafu. So keep on forgiving them and ignoring them. It was actually a very basic policy matter that the Prophet also wanted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given the same instruction here that after hijrah the Prophet wanted وسلم, and Allah also gave the same direction to try to have peace with these people these Jews at Medina because now the struggle was to start against the people of Bakka so don't start any other dispute and conflict as far as possible at Medina. So actually, go on forgiving. Go on ignoring them. Don't argue with them. Don't in every matter question them. So that was the matter of policy that was being given here. Fafu anhu. So you go on forgiving them for all the, their treacheries that is coming in your knowledge. But you just don't bring them to book. Don't investigate. Don't, you know, argue with them. Wasfahu and just ignore them hatta yati allahu bi amri till that time that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forth his final decision final decision will be the triumph of islam the superiority of islam in the arabian peninsula then you know these people will also be brought to the book inna allah ala kulli shay'in qadir verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful to do everything wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah and you, O Muslims, establish the prayers and you go on paying zakah. And 
and whatsoever you send forth before you, before dying, you are sending these charities and good deeds of yours towards hereafter. That is your stock for the life hereafter. Whatever you are sending before you, you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Allah bima ta'amaluna basir. Verily Allah is, is seeing whatever you are doing. Don't think that whatever you are doing, the good deeds that you are performing are not in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالُوا لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُودًا أَوْ نَسَارًا And they say, who say? The people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُودًا أَوْ نَسَارًا Nobody will be enter, able to enter Jannah, paradise, except who is a Jew or a Christian. تِلْكَ أَمَانِيُّهُمْ This is their wishful thinking. This is their own thinking. These are the Ideas framed by themselves. Kul hatu burhana kum in kuntum sadiqeen. Ask them. Tell them to bring forth your argument. What proof you have? Bring forth Bible. Bring forth Torah. And tell us where it, it is written in the, in the Torah. Kul hatu burhana kum in kuntum sadiqeen. If you are truthful. Bala man aslama wajhahu lillahi wa wa muhsanun. Why not? Whosoever submits his face. And face here means will. Whosoever has submitted his face, that is his will, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ And he is doing it out of sincerity. Not hypocritically. Not apparently only. مُحْسِنٌ Within the most handsome and beautiful way. فَلَهُ وَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَلَا قَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْضُنُونَ For him is his reward. Ensured, and it is with his Lord, and on them there will be no fear, nor they will have to grieve. Now just note these two ayat. In the previous ayah, they said only the Jews and the Christians will enter paradise. Here the dispute among themselves. So they became one when they were against Muslims. But then, when you know they were between themselves, they were quarreling with each other also. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَكِ النَّسَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ And the Jews say that the Christians are not on anything. They have no basis. They are baseless. They have no deen. وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارَ لَيْسَكِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ In the same manner, the Christians say that the Jews are on no basis. They have no ground under their feet. Their religion is baseless. وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ Although they are reading the same book. The Old Testament is common between the two. The Jews don't believe in the New Testament. But you know the major part of the Bible. That is actually the Old Testament. وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ And both of them are reading and reciting the same book. كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ مِسْلَ قَوْلِهِمْ the same thing was said by those people who know nothing. That is the pagan Arabs, the Ummi Yin, who had no book whatsoever. They also said that we are on the right path, neither the Jews nor the Christians. None of them is on the right path. Misla Qalihim. They also said this, the same thing like they are saying. So Allah will decide and judge between them on the day of judgment about all those things in which they were differing from each other. Because there was a mention of the pagan Arabs here in the previous ayah. Now you know the question of Baitullah that is being discussed. In a generalized way it is, this ayah is saying who is more unjust than those who forbid from Allah's mosques that the name of Allah be taken there, remembered there, and they strive for their ruin. That was the reference to the Quraysh of Makkah, who were forbidding the Muslims. They could not enter Masjid al-Haram, they couldn't make Umrah, they couldn't do Hajj, 
They couldn't go and make zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there. They, do, they couldn't go and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there. وَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِمَّا مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ اَنْ يُسْكَرَ فِي حَسْمُهُ بَسَا فِي خَرَابِهَا أُولَائِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ اَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ These people actually, they don't have the right to enter these mosques except with fear. Instead of having, you know, that they, they have become the guardians of this mosque of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Baitullah, Masjid al-Haram, these Quraysh, these Mushrikeen, these idolaters, these idol worshippers. These pageants, they have become the guardians of the house of Allah, which was built by Ibrahim and Ismail for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So they should actually be in a position not of guardianship, but even if they enter, they should enter with fear, not with authority. لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِذْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ For them, there is humiliation in this world and in the hereafter, there will be very grievous torment and punishment. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ فَيَنَمَا تُوَلُّوا حَسَمَّ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ Now please note that this address to the Bani Israel is coming to an end gradually. A very small part of it remains. After that, I told you there are four sections of this surah which discuss the switch over of the former ummah being deposed and the Muslim Ummah being installed in its position of representation of Allah on earth. A Muslim Ummah is the representative of Allah on earth. Just as Adam was made vice dirent of Allah on earth, the Muslim Ummah is a representative of Allah on earth. And now for that purpose, Kaaba, because that was to become the Tibla forever now. Now that men it has been made, the mere mention has been made of Kaaba and masjid e haram that it is still under the guardianship and control of the mushriks. But because there was going to be a change of direction of the Qibla from Jerusalem to Makkah, this ayah has appeared here, wal-maghrib, because it was going to be a very big issue, change of the direction of Qibla. For many people it became very a tricky type of problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has started discussing this issue that this direction of Qibla, it is nothing. Allah is not confined to any one direction. East or west, north or south, all belong to Allah. Whichever way you face, that is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only for harmony, for a discipline, that a particular direction is fixed. So that there shouldn't be chaos. Whole of the community should be facing in one direction. The whole of the congregation, you know that is facing in the same direction. For only a direction is fixed. Not that Allah is confined to that direction. Well, this is actually something, thinking very low of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the issue of this ayah. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Mashriq and Maghrib, east and west, all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا Whichever direction you take and face, فَثَمَّ بَجْهُ اللَّهِ that is the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah wasi'un alim. Allah is, verily Allah is all embracing, all knowing. In whichever direction you are facing, actually it becomes the, the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only for your convenience, for a harmony, for a discipline, that a particular direction is given so that all the people or the members of the community are facing in the same direction. Nothing else. And they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has begotten a son. Now this is common to both. The Nasara, the Christians, they say that Jesus was a begotten son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Begotten son of God. And the pagan Arabs, they had the belief that these angels were daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both had committed the same crime. Qalu tahad Allah walala subhana. Glory be to him. He is above all these things. He is exalted. Wallahu ma fi samawati wal ardi kullu lahu qanitun. Instead everything that is in the skies and heavens and earth belongs to him and everything is 
surrendering to him in obedience everybody everything every creature angels jinns the humans all the animals all the skies and heavens everything is obeying him is in surrender before him badiu samawati wal ard wa iza qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun he is the originator of the skies heavens and the earth now please note here khalq and ibda these are two terms ibda from this is derived this badi ibda means creation ex nihilo creating something from nothing no matter now there was wood and the carpenter has made this table out of wood there is something and somebody makes something from that this is creation this is khalq allah subhanahu wa taala created men from the clay the clay was there and he created men out of clay allah subhanahu wa taala created jinns out of fire the fire was present prior to the creation of the jinns but you know in the beginning there was nothing and that is ibda creation ex nihilo creating something out of nothing so allah is the creator of this universe and he has created all these things from nothing and then after that he is creating from some one thing to another thing something and he creates another thing from it but in the beginning it's ibda badiu samawati wal ard he is the creator of this universe these are heavens and earth out of nothing wa iza qada amran and we have, when he decides something fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun so he only says be and it and it becomes he doesn't need any matter to create anything any material to create anything no only his command be kun fa yakun and it becomes his command is the only thing and it is all sufficient in the creation that is ibda that is creation ex nihilo badiu samawati wal ard wa idha qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun wa qala alladhina la ya'lamuna lawla yukallimun Allahu aw ta'tina aya and so said those who don't know anything this is also the reference to the pagan arabs who didn't have any book any scriptures laula yukallimunullah why doesn't allah not speak to us how come he only spoke to moses how come he only sent his wahi to muhammad why not to us we are more important in the community we are the chieftains we are the chiefs of different houses of quraish but why didn't the wahi come to us why doesn't allah talk to us and speak to us aw taatina aya or why has not a clear sign and proof a mojiza a miracle come to us kazalika qala alladhina min qablihim these were the sayings of the people who were before them the same things were said to nuh alayhi salatu wassalam to hud alayhi salatu wassalam to shuaib alayhi salatu wassalam to lut alayhi salatu wassalam all the people to whom we sent our messengers they said the same things qad bayyanna alayat tashabahat qulubuhum their hearts have become similar to each other qad bayyanna alayat liqaumi yuqinun we have made our ayat very clear very shining for those who have the belief who want to have conviction inna arsalnaka bil haqqi bashiran wa nazira we have sent you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the truth the total truth the whole truth bil haqq bashiran wa nazira and you have two two positions two aspects bashir giver of the glad tidings to those who believe in you who believe in allah who become allah bondsman so you have to give them the good tidings wa nazira and you are the warner to those who disbelieve who don't believe in allah who don't believe in the resurrection who don't believe in you so you warn them that for them there is a very bitter and very grievous punishment waiting for them wala tusalu an ashabi al jahim and you will not be questioned about the people of the fire you will not be held responsible that why didn't you they believe we have given them the choice imma shakiran wa imma kufura it's their choice whosoever wants to believe let him believe whosoever want to disbelieve let him disbelieve 
you can't press them you can't compel them so you are not questionable you will not be held responsible for those people who are going by their own choice to the hell wala tusalu an ashabil jahim walan tarda an kal yahud wala nasara hatta tattabi amillatahum and neither the jews nor the christians will be pleased with you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam till you follow them their millah what is millat millat actually is a very collective word for the practices and beliefs of a community if you don't take to their own beliefs if you don't accept their practices they are not going to be pleased with you so oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam don't hope don't expect that these people you know the prophet and the muslims they had the hope because these people were of the book they believed in allah they believed in so many messengers of allah they believed in resurrection they believed in the hereafter they believed in the fire of hell they believed in the paradise and heavens they believed in so many things so many things were common so it was easy for them to accept and they were expected to accept gladly but the allah subhanahu wa taala is telling him no out of jealousy out of their pride out of their haughtiness out of their arrogance they are not going to believe you rather they like they would wish that you should follow them they are the leaders of the community they they hold position so they want that you should follow them lan tarda ankal yahud wal nasara hatta tatabi'a billatahum and this is exactly what is happening today our own civilization our values these muslim fundamentalists they are challenging them we have to guard them this is the, you know the who and cry in the west so our civilization our values our culture our system our economies well these things are threatened by these muslim fundamentalists they should follow us they should not present their own culture their own teachings to us walan tarda ankal yahud wal nasara hatta tatabi'a millatahum qul inna huda allah huwal huda now we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives each one of us the courage to say these words with confidence inna huda allah huwal huda we don't believe in your values we don't believe in your culture we say it openly and loudly that the guidance is only the guidance of allah subhanahu wa taala qul inna huda allah huwal huda all guidance total guidance real guidance is the guidance of allah wala in tabata ahwahu and if supposedly please add this word here because these words are very bitter if o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you follow them after bada ma ja bada alladhi ja ka min al ilm after this that this knowledge has already come to you ma laka min allah min wali wala nasir then you will not be able to find for you against allah subhanahu wa taala to save you from the wrath of allah subhanahu wa taala you will find no wali no protector no guardian no helper wala nasir so this is these are very bitter words so we must add the word supposedly if supposedly oh muhammad you follow their wishes instead of this quran which has been revealed to you after this has been revealed to you then you will also become liable to punishment and you will also have nobody to to help you nobody to guard you and to save you from the punishment of allah subhanahu wa taala allazina atainahumul kitaba yatlunahu haqqa tilawati those to whom we give our book they recite it as is the right of its recital as it should be recited now this word tilawa has two meanings tilawa means to recite which we call in urdu tilawat in arabic we have to pronounce it as tilawa what is tilawa two meanings this recital reciting the quran and tala yatlu means also to follow you know the famous surah wa shams wa duhaha wal qamar iza talaha the sun is a witness to it and it's its light and warmth also and also the the moon is a witness when it follows the sun comes after the sun 
to go after something to follow someone it is talaha yatlu so actually allazina atainahum alkitab yatlunahu whom so ever we give our book they read it recite it and follow it haqqa tilawatihi as it should be recited as is the right of this book to be recited now what is the right of this book how it should be recited should it be recited without understanding and if we recite it without understanding are we fulfilling the right of this book should it be read only not to act upon it simple answer would be no it must be read with a determination to follow it with a full determination to act upon it if you are not reading it in that way you are not reading it as you should read it it's only a pastime it's only a hobby it's only to get sawab you know nothing else so haqqa tilawat hi again i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala he gives us the determination to fulfill the requirements of this ayah allah subhanahu wa taala has given us this book the biggest blessing in this world is the book of allah the word of allah i told you this word of allah is with allah it's actually innahu fi ummil kitab ladaina ala aliyyun hakim alladhina atainahum alkitaba yatlunahu haqqa tilawatihi allahumma rabbana ij'alna minhum allahumma rabbana ij'alna minhum ulaika yu'minuna bihi only such people are those who really believe in it who are not reciting it or reciting it without understanding and reciting and understanding but not acting upon it they are not the true believers in this book ulaika yu'minuna bihi wa may yakfur bihi fa ulaika humul khasirun and whosoever disbelieves in it then they are people who are in loss they are the losers they are doomed they will be doomed on the day of judgment يا بني اسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي انعمت عليكم نايت ذوس تو ايات دي ار كلوزنج ذا بريكيت ذا بريكيت ستارتد ان ذا بيجينينج اوف ذا سيكس سيكشن يا بني اسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي انعمت عليكم واني فضلتكم على العالمين اكزاكتلي ذا سيم ايا وذاوت اني ديفرنس اوف ا جوت يا بني اسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي انعمت عليكم او بروجيني اوف ياقوب عليه الصلاه والسلام Remember the blessing that we sent upon you. We chose you out of all the nations of the world. We made you exalted over the all the nations of the world. For two thousand years, you were our representative on earth. We sent books after books to you. We gave Torah to you. We gave Zabur to you. We gave Injil to you, and we gave the scriptures to so many, to so many prophets. you have those those scriptures in the old testament the the, the book of zechariah yesiah jeremiah so many prophets and the books are included in the old testament so what you know blessing the fadl subhanahu wa taala had been coming to this this community this former muslim umma what taqu yawman la tajzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a have fear of that day of judgment when no person shall avail another wala yuqbalu minha adlun and there will be no compensation to be accepted from any side wala tanfa huwa shafa'atun nor any intercession would be of benefit to anybody wala hum yunsarun nor will they be help from any side the same four things which were enumerated there in the second ayah of the sixth section they are also here first and last are the same but the second and third have only changed their position The second is the number three here, and number three there is number two here. Exactly the same ayat. This bracket started and now ended. The direct address to Bani Israel is ending here, and now four sections of this surah. They are the sections which I have called tahwili, switching over. The switching over is from the former Muslim umma to the present Muslim umma, and. the symbol was the change of the qibla from jerusalem which was the center the sacred city for them to makkah which is the center and the sacred city of this ummah 
So this switching off of the ummas and this changing of the direction of the qibla, that is the subject discussed in four sections now. And because between these two ummah, the personality of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is common. Because the former Muslim ummah also belong to the progeny of Ibrahim. Ibrahim's son, Ishaq, Ishaq's son, Yaqub, and 12 sons of Yaqub, and from that, from those 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Bani Israel. And again, this new Muslim ummah, that was raised on the basis of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He also belonged to the progeny of Ibrahim through Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. So here you find, you know, this is the wisdom of Quran. Before discussing this change of the ummahs, before discussing this the issue of the change of the qibla, first of all, the personality of Ibrahim wasalam, is highlighted here. In two sections, Ibrahim, Ismail, building of Kaaba, their prayer when they were raising the foundations of Kaaba, they are discussed. So that the common factor is made prominent first, and then you know the difference that, will go, that was going to occur will be discussed. And just remember, when Ibrahim was tested by his Lord, by so many big tests, kalimatin, so many commands, one command after the other, one command after the other, one test after the other, one tribulation after the other, Fatammahum, and he fulfilled all of them. He cleared all of them. He was successful in all of them. The final was the demand of the sacrifice of the only son Ismail, which he begot after praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when that the only son of Ibrahim was 13 years old, and Ibrahim himself was 100 years old, then he was commanded to sacrifice his only son. And he didn't hesitate even in that test. He was successful. And remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim in so many very big tests. And he completed all of them. Allah said to him, I am going to make you and declare you the leader of all communities, leader of all humanity. He asked, and what about my progeny? Is this promise of you, will it cover my progeny also? Allah said, my promise doesn't cover, doesn't relate to those people who are unjust. Now this question, this answer has two aspects. Yes, to your progeny also, but not to the Zalimun from them. For your progeny also, the promise is there. Because after Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Nabuwa, the Salah, they were reserved for, for his progeny. For 2000 years, in one line of his progeny. And then the last prophet, the final prophet, that the, he also came in his progeny. So actually the promise was w true with the progeny of Ibrahim also, but not from among those who were unjust, who take to shirk, who go astray. They are not included in this, prom in, in this promise. Why is al bayta musabatan lilla sewamna? And remember, when we declared the house, the house that is the house of God, Kaaba, Kaabatullah, Baytullah, Masabat al -Nas. We declared it to be a place of visiting, visitation and pilgrimage for the people. Wa amna. And a place of peace and security. Wa takhidu min maqam Ibrahim wa musalla. And we commanded the believers that the station of Ibrahim, you take it as a place of worship, of saying your prayers. Now what that means? The stone on which Ibrahim والسلام, stood when he was raising the walls of Kaaba. And it is said, the tradition goes, that as the walls were going up, the stone was also going up. 
because there were no scaffoldings at the, on, in those times. So building such a high wall of Kaaba that needed something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a stone. It's a miracle. But that stone is present even now and after every tawaf, you know, two rakat of prayer are set there near that, that stone. That is the station of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Some people think that Maqam Ibrahim means Makkah, where he, he lived. So that is the place of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But you know, most of the Mufassirin, they, are, they have the consensus, the, uh, the opinion is that it is that proper stone which is preserved till this day. Wahidna ila Ibrahim wa Ismail, and we take a promise, we took a promise and a covenant from Ibrahim and Ismail. Antahira baytiya, ye keep my house pure, litaifin. For those people who come here for circumambulation, for going round and round our house, wal akifin. Or those who retire here for meditation and for praying to me, etekaf, wal rukai sujud. And for those who are going here before me, and for those who are prostrating here before me, whosoever comes to this house to pay a pilgrimage, to, to do tawaf, to do etekaf, to do qiyam and ruku and sujood and say prayers, for them you keep this house clean. Clean apparently also. There shouldn't be any, you know, any garbage over there. And clean also from the dirt and from the dust of shirk. There should be tawheed. That is the inner cleanliness. And just recall, when Ibrahim said to Allah, he called Allah, invoked Allah, he prayed to Allah. Rabbi Jal Haza Baladan Amina. O my Lord, keep this place, this city, this town, a place of peace and tranquility. Warzuk Ahlahu Minas Samarat. And provide the people who live here with fruits. Man Amana Minhum Billahi Wal Yawmil Akhir. Those of them. Who believe in Allah and the, the last day. Because you know previously when Hazrat Ibrahim said, Wabin Zurriyati, what about my progeny? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yanalu zalimin. This promise of mine doesn't cover the unjust people. Maybe they are your progeny, but if they are unjust, they will not be included in this, in this, in this promise. So here Hazrat Ibrahim himself says, I'm not asking for those of my progeny who are disbelievers or who have gone astray, but those who keep to your faith, who have Iman in you and the, in the hereafter in the day of judgment, at least for them, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you provide them the peace, tranquility in this city, as well as provide them with the food through sending to them the fruits from all over the world. Qala wa man kafara. Now Allah Ta'ala said, Man kafara, whosoever takes to kufr, goes astray, فَأُمَتْتَهُ قَلِيلًا To him also I will grant something for this life. I shall grant them comforts. سُمَّ أَسْتَرْوَهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِيَسَ الْمَسِيرِ And then I will compel him, compel them and drive them to the fire of hell. And verily, that is a very bad place well, very bad to return, very bad destination. Why is there for Ibrahim al Qawaida bin al Baiti wa Ismail? And remember when Ibrahim and Ismail والسلام, were raising the foundations of the house, building the house, building the walls of the house, house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana taqabbal minna. And they were praying, Oh our Lord, accept this service from us. Inna kanta samiul alim. Verily, you are the only one who sees everything, who hears everything, who knows everything. Rabbana waj'alna muslimain illak. O our Lord, make both of us, father and son, Ibrahim and Ismail, they are praying to Allah. Make both of us, your Muslims. Make us submit to you totally, humbly. Keep us as Muslims. Please give us the courage to remain Muslims. 
ہیئر لیٹ می کوٹ دی کپلٹ فرام علامہ اقبال چمی گوئم مسلمانم بے لرزم کہ دانا مشکلات لا الہ رہا وین آئی سے آئی ایم اے مسلم آئی ٹریمبل بکاز آئی نو اٹس ویری ایزی ٹو سے دیٹ آئی ایم اے مسلم بٹ اٹ از ویری ڈیفیکلٹ ٹو بی اے ریئل مسلم سو دیٹ از دی پریئر آف ابراہیم اینڈ اسماعیل ہیونگ دیٹ ہائی پوزیشن ان دی آئیز آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی بٹ دے آر اسٹل پریئنگ ٹو ہم کیپ اس مسلم پلیز گیو اس دی کریج ٹو ریمین مسلم ٹو ریمین ان فل سبمیشن ٹوڈس یو ربنا وجعلنا مسلمین لک و من ذریتنا امت مسلمت لک اینڈ فرام اور پروجنی یو ریز این امم اے کمیونٹی دیٹ شوڈ بی سبمیسو ٹو یو وارنا مناسکنا اینڈ شو اس اور رائٹس آف حج اینڈ عمرہ وٹ شوڈ وی ڈو ہاؤ ٹو شو رسپیکٹ ٹو یور ہاؤس ہاؤ ٹو پرفارم حج ارے نا منا سے کنا مے بی دے ور شون ٹو دیم ان سم ڈریم جسٹ پاسبل ارے نا شو ٹو اس مے بی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی مائٹ ہیو سینڈ جبرائیل ٹو پرفارم حج اینڈ پرفارم دی رائٹس اف حج سو دیٹ ابراہیم اینڈ اسماعیل کوڈ لرن جسٹ ایز یو نو دیٹ حضرت اللہ تعالی سینڈ حضرت جبرائیل ٹو ٹیچ صلاح ٹو محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حضرت جبرائیل پریڈ ود محمد محمد واس مختدی اینڈ امام واس جبرائیل and they prayed to allah subhanahu wa taala so in that way allah subhanahu wa taala taught muhammad how to pray so this salah was taught to him so in the same way wa are na manasikana show us what are the rites and rituals of this house of yours wa tub alaina accept our tauba have relenting attitude towards us inna ka anta tawwabur rahim because you are the only one who accepts tauba and you are the only one who has all the mercy rabbana wa basihim rasulam minhum another prayer and our lord please raise from among them rasulam minhum a, a messenger but he should be from amongst them for them a rasul a messenger from themselves yatlu alaihim ayatika who should Recite unto them your ayat, while you allah muhammad kitab wal hikmah, and teach them the book as well as the wisdom, while you zakki him and purify them. In the kantar azizul hakim, verily you are only you are the Almighty, the All Wise. This was the prayer, you know, for the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That you know, from this progeny of ours, this line of our progeny. from here a community should be raised and in that community a messenger should be sent and what said that what should that messenger do recite to them your ayat purify them teach them the book as well as the wisdom wa may yarghabu an millat ibrahim illa man safiya nafsa and who will turn away from the millah again that is the same word the path and practices of ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam illa man safiya nafsa except those who are have, who have befooled themselves who have put themselves in folly only they will refrain and turn away from the path and practices of ibrahim wa laqad istafainahu fi dunya and we had chosen him in this world also we had exalted him wa innahu fil akhirati lamin as-salihin and in the hereafter verily he will be among the righteous bondsmen of ours is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim when his lord said to him submit yourself qala aslam tu li rabbil alamin whenever allah said accept my command bow before me accept this command submit before me at every moment every time the answer was aslam tu li rabbil alamin I submit to the Lord of all the worlds. Wa wassa biha Ibrahim wa bani wa Yaqub. And Ibrahim and Yaqub both, they enjoined their progenies, their sons, to the same thing. Ya inna Allah astafa lakum al-din. What was that? The advice, the enjoining of Ibrahim and Yaqub alayhim as-salatu wa salam to their sons. ان الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او ماي سنز الله سبحانه وتعالى هاز چوزن فور يو دي دين اوف اسلام 
So look to it that you don't die except as Muslims. You should be in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till your death. No moment should come in your life when you are revolting against him, in rebellion against him. You are breaking his laws. Lest the icy hands of death pounce upon you at that very moment. Then that death will not be the death of a Muslim. Because you will be contravening the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. If you are dying in a state of rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a state of sin, that is not the death of a Muslim. Ya banayya inna Allah astafa alakum uddeen. Oh my sons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this deen for you. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Look to it that you don't die except as Muslim. You don't die except in submission. Antum tu shahada is hadara yaqub al maut. Were you witnesses? Were you present? When the death came to Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, is qal alayhi bani hai. When he said to his sons, all the twelve sons were with him. When he talked to them at the time of his death, ma ta'abuduna min ba'di. Whom will you worship after me? Qalu na'abudu ilaha ka wa ilaha abai ka Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq. They said, we shall worship your Lord. And the Lord and God of your elders, your forefathers, that is Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, alayhi salatu wa salam, ilahum wahida. And he is one God, manahnu lahu muslimun. And we all submit to him. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. This is a community, these were a people who have gone, who have passed. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. Now don't boast in their names. Laha ma kasabat. For them was what they earned. The, all the good deeds that they performed were for them, not for you. Wa lakum ma kasabtum. For you will be what you will earn, not what they earned. Laha ma kasabat. This is a community, these are the people who have passed away, who have gone. Laha ma kasabat for them is what they earned. For you will be what you will learn. And you will not be asked what they were doing. You will be asked what you have been doing. And they say, who say? The same Jews and Christians. They say, become either Jews or Christians. Then you will be guided. You will be on the right path. Say no. Instead, we will follow the path and practices of Ibrahim والسلام, who was Hanif, who was absolutely without any shirk. He was absolutely wholeheartedly and totally a muwahid. He was not from among the polytheists, not those who worship anything and anyone else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qulu amanna. O Muslims, you say in reply to them. They are saying, Qulu hudan aw nasara tahtadu. In reply, you should say, Qulu amanna billahi. We believe in Allah. Wa ma'unzila ilayna. And on what has been sent on, sent towards us. Wa ma'unzila ila Ibrahim. And what was sent to Ibrahim. Wa Ismaila, wa Ishaqa, wa Yaquba, and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub, wa Lasbate, and his sons. Wa ma'uti Musa wa Isa, and what was given to Moses, and what was given to Jesus. Wa ma'uti an Nabi Yuna min Rabbihim, and whatever was given to all the prophets from their Lord. La do farriqo bain ahadim min hum. We don't divide between them. We don't discriminate between them. We believe in all of them. We believe in all the prophets, but nahnu lahu muslimun, and we are in submission to Allah and Allah only. Fain amanu be muslima aman tum behi. And then, if they come to believe, just in the same way as you have believed, O Muslims, without any reservations, not claiming that we believe in Allah and day after, and the hereafter and the day of judgment, and the omit. The Iman bil Rasul. No. If they believe just as you have come to believe. 
if they believe in all those things in which you Muslims believe, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِسْلِمَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا Then definitely they are on the right path. Then they have got the guidance. وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا And if they turn away, فَإِنْ نَمَاهُمْ فِي شِقَاق Then verily they are in antagonism. They are in enmity. They are in Shi'ism. فَسَيَكْفِي كَهُمُ اللَّهِ And Allah will suffice for you against them. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't fear them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for your help against them. وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ And he is all listener, all knowledgeable. سِبْغَةَ اللَّهِ We have adopted the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سِبْغَةً And who can be better in color than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Now what does this color mean? The whole attitude in life, the culture, the civilization, which is the result of iman, real iman, real faith. That is the sibgatullah, that is the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سِبْغَةً وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ And we are bondsmen to him. We are all slaves to him. قُلَ تُحَاجُّ لَنَا فِي اللَّهِ Ask them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are you arguing us? You, O Jews, and you, O Christians, do you argue with us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَهُوَ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ He is our Lord, as well as your Lord. He is the one Lord of all this universe. So what's the dispute about? What's the argument about? Allah is the same. Allah is the same who sent Moses. The same Allah sent Jesus. The same Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَتُحَاجُّنَنَا فِي اللَّهِ Do you argue with us? Do you dispute us about Allah? وَهُوَ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ He is our Lord, our Master, and your Lord and your Master. وَلَنَا عَمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ عَمَالُكُمْ For us are our deeds, and for you will be your deeds. We shall not be responsible for you, and you shall not be held responsible for us. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُخْلِصُونَ But we have become more sincerely devoted to him and him alone. أَمْ تَقُولُوا لَإِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْبَائِلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْكُوبَ وَلَسْبَاتَ كَانُوا هُدًا أَوْ نَسَارَ A very beautiful, you know, expression. What do you say, O Jews and Christians? Do you say that Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub were Jews or Christians? Everybody would say no. Jew, this religion of Jewry and Christianity, they have come after Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub. We can say that this religion of Judaism, it started with Moses at the most. Christianity started with Jesus at the most. So Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, they were neither Christians nor Jews. Quran tum alamu amillah. Say, are you more knowledgeable? Or Allah, wa man azlamu min man katama shahadatan indahu min Allah. Who is more unjust than the one who conceals a testimony with him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa man Allahu bi ghafil in amma ta'amaloon. Allah is not unaware of what you are doing. Til ka ummatun qad khalat. They were a people who have passed. Ibrahim, Ismail, Isaac, Yaqub. They were a community. They were a people who have died, who have gone, who have passed. Laha ma kasabat. For them was what they earned. Wa lakum ma kasabtum. For you will be what you will earn. Wa la tusalun amma kanu ya'malun. And you will not be asked what they were doing. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakeem.